I'm Kelly Vaughn, and this is Inside Indy, and welcome to the show. In this edition of Inside Indy, we're going to talk about health, wealth, and success. And we're going to be talking to the author of this book, Beat the Curve, featuring Rodney Jones, you see there, and Brian Tracy, among others. And mm -hmm. Rodney is here in the studio with us. Hello, Mr. Jones. Hello. You are the owner of R.L. Jones Financial Group and R.L. Jones Insurance Group. Correct. All right, man. Um, sounds like you do a little bit of everything, so I'm not even sure where to start. Let's start with what you do um, and how you do what you do. Okay. Well, what I do is uh, pretty unique. Of course, I'm in the, I'm in the financial services business, mm -hmm. and what I do is I help people avoid transferring money away unknowingly and unnecessarily, and mm -hmm. that is what I do that's unique. Now, when I say financial services, probably a lot of things come to mind, like where do I put my money, what do I do with my money, how do I get the best returns? Well, I can certainly help you with that. But what makes me unique is I help people avoid places where they may be transferring wealth away unnecessarily. And we recapture those dollars and bring them back to the table and put them in two places. We put the lion's share in your accumulated assets so that your future is more solid. But we also put some into your uh, lifestyle so that the journey along the way is a pleasant one. Mm. And that is what I do that's unique. Okay, okay. And now, when you even say the word transfer, explain mm -hmm. that to people. because, And I know nothing about investing, insurance, and so and, and I'm sure there are other people out there who are like me who are pretty new to this whole thing. Well, transfers are just the way we spend money every day. We make money. We spend money, and a lot of times we don't have any left over. If there is, we might try to save some. There's actually five areas of wealth transfers that most people are transferring money away mm -hmm. unknowingly, and that is um, how you pay for your mortgage. Did you put a little down? Should you put a lot down? Should wow. you get a 30-year? Should you get a 15-year? Should you make extra payments and pay it down early? Uh, how you pay your taxes, how you fund your qualified plans, how you're going to pay for your kids' college, how you pay for major capital purchases like financing a car or, or weddings or vacations or things like that. What I have found is those are the five areas where most people are transferring away money unnecessarily and those dollars are lost and gone forever. And I got the very unique uh, ability to find those areas and bring that money back to the table so that their, their future is more bright. Okay, now one thing I am familiar with, and we'll start with that one because uh, and, I'm, and most everybody, unless you're renting, has this, a mortgage. Okay. So how are we transferring money away and not getting it back when we're investing in a home? Because a lot of people think that is a, you know, a sure way to invest. It's solid. You get a return on your investment. It's not necessarily like a car where it depreciates. And you say what about mortgages? Well, every situation is different, but most people, and we grew up believing and we were bombarded with the financial institutions telling us that we should always pay our house off early and put down a large down payment on your house so that your, your payments are, are, are smaller. Well, when you put a large down payment on a house, uh, let's just take a $100,000 house and you put $25,000 down, uh, you didn't have to, but you decided to do that to keep your payments down. Well, once you give that $25,000 to that mortgage company, that money's lost and gone forever. Is it earning any interest for you? No. Are you get able to use that money and do anything with it? No. Where if you were to put a smaller down payment down, keep your $25,000, put it into an account that's going to gain money for you, then you've got control of that money instead of giving it to a mortgage company where you've lost all control of that money. Well, I think most people, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, the term for that is called opportunity cost. The definition of opportunity cost is if I had to pay a dollar, say in taxes that um, I didn't have to pay, I not only lost that dollar, but I lost what that dollar could have earned for me mm -hmm. if I'd have been able to keep it. Okay, I can see that. So why some people... Um, like to get a refund check, but you're saying that money is sitting there all year and they could be using doing something else with it. That's correct. That, that's taxes. That's a good example. People, people like to claim zero on their exemptions and, and then get that money back at the end of the year. Well, that whole year, did the IRS, did they pay you interest on that money? No. Do you normally have to pay a CPA or, or a tax accountant 
to get that money back for you? Yes. Where I encourage people, take that money up front and put it into your life. So you could have gained interest off that money all, all the 12 months instead of claiming zero and giving it to the government. And then you got to pay somebody to get it back 12 months later mm-hmm. or the next year. Now, I think what a lot of, why a lot of people do that is because we're not disciplined enough to save And so when they're doing that with their taxes, it's kind of like forcing us to do what we should do and that they're a little more organized in doing it. So how or can you help us taking that, take that money from giving it away, so to speak, and transferring it where it can make us money? But again, a lot of times it's the lack of discipline because I know when I grew up, nobody taught me about finances. Mm -hmm. They don't they teach it in school now, but when I was coming up, you know, it was arithmetic and writing. You didn't learn about how to save money right? or how to, to transfer money and, and, and to invest it. Well, there's definitely a lost art there, and you hit it right on the head. We grew up, and nobody ever took us aside and really taught us about money. We know how to make it, and we know how to spend it, but we don't <laughs> know how to save it. And those statistics are evident not only in our generation, but in the younger generation as well. The statistics have been coming out that people just don't save money. You know, they're still living paycheck to paycheck, even when they get up in their 40s and their 50s when they should be financially secure. So education is actually the best way to uh, start in the process and learn about money, and that's what I do. I educate people. A good example is a golf analogy on, on what I do. Um, Kelly, we're gonna take you to the Masters, uh, the greatest of all golf events, and we're gonna let you play in the Masters tournament, and I'm gonna give you two things, and you get to pick one. You can have the clubs of any player that's ever played around the golf, or you could have their ability. Which would you choose? The best. The that's ultimate. right. You, yes. you, that's right. You choose their ability. Mm-hmm. Having the ability is much more uh, um, um, better for you than having the clubs. And these financial institutions um, and the government as well, they have products which we're going to call clubs. And you got to have good products to, or good clubs to play golf and good mm-hmm. products to be successful in the financial arena. But you also got to learn the swing and you got to know the strategy and go to the practice tee and get the swing down. Then we get the good clubs and then we become (laughs) successful. Good analogy because it certainly opens up my mind. Well, thank you. But I think what people also are afraid of, and again, I'm just speaking probably as your average citizen. Okay, so now I'm going to redirect some of this money that I have. I think some of us think, though, we don't really have a lot of money. And it's, it's, okay, after I pay everything, I don't really have a lot. And... You don't invest that amount of money. So I think they just don't think it's worth it because they feel they won't have enough left over to transfer. Okay. You say what? You hit it on the nose earlier. Uh, It's really about discipline. Are you the kind of person that spends money and then if there's any left over, I'm going to save some? Or are you the kind of person that I'm going to save some money for my future and then I'm going to spend what's left? There's two types of people. Most of the people, they make their money, they spend their money, and if there happens to be any left over, I'll put a little bit aside for my future. And that's why we're in such the mess that we're in. We need the discipline, and we need the products, and we need the education to know that our future is coming, and we need to plan for our financial future as well as live a good lifestyle while we're living today. So you're saying your first payment should not be your house payment, it should be to yourself. That's correct. It should be to your future to your retirement. Wow. That, I, just even thinking about it is just hard because, again, I think a lot of people operate on such tight budgets to begin with, and they just can't see how to make that happen. That's and, where I come in. Okay. I help people with that. Okay. So now walk us through what, how you help people and what you offer. What, what does that feel like? What does that look like? If I come to your office and I say, okay, look, I just feel like I don't have enough money okay. to, to save. I don't know where to begin. What do you do? What's well, back to what I told you, what makes me unique. Instead of trying to find ways, Kelly, where we need to cut your lifestyle down a little bit. Maybe you don't need to buy this. Maybe you don't need to buy that. Maybe you could cut out going to Macy's, and then we're going to have a little bit of money to save for your future. Mm-hmm. I find the areas on your everyday spending uh, and recapture those dollars so that you don't have to change your lifestyle. We'll just find a, a good analogy of this is if you've got a bucket with holes in it, the first thing we need to do is plug the holes. 
And so if I can find areas where you're transferring money unknowingly and unnecessarily, like on your mortgage, your taxes, how you fund your 401k, how you're going to pay for your kids' college, how you purchase your cars, if we can find that money that's going out the door and lost forever, forever, recapture those dollars and bring them back, now we got some money we can put into your future. And it doesn't change your lifestyle at all. Most okay. financial planners will talk to you about, well, Kelly, let me see. You need to cut out this, and uh, maybe you should just take one vacation a year instead of three. That's not what I do. I'm not here to help you reduce your lifestyle. I'm here to help you have a better lifestyle. Mm, okay, okay, which is your book uh, talks about health, wealth, and success, and we'll talk about those and more when we come back. Hi, I'm Danny Lifford from Today's Homeowner, giving you a few summer maintenance tips. A lot of maintenance tips have to do with getting things nice and clean. If you're cleaning windows, half vinegar, half water, use newspaper instead of paper towels, it works great. When you're taking care of all of cleaning the furniture, just regular soap and water and a scrub brush will get it clean. But if you find any repairs that are needed, especially on wood like this, consider using Tight Bond 3. It's the ultimate wood glue for interior or exterior. We just repaired this little section here. It worked great. Air conditioning is also very important. My daughter Chelsea's inside with a few tips for you. Yeah, if you're thinking about getting a new air conditioning system, you want to consider the SEER rating, the Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. We recently installed a carrier unit that has a SEER rating of 42, and it's perfect for an addition like we have here on the back of the house. It's called a mini split ductless system, as you can see right there. You can find out more details about that and our home summer maintenance list at todayshomeowner.com. And we're back here on Inside India, and we're talking to uh, financial guru, insurance expert, Rodney Jones. And he's also uh, featured in this book, Beat the Curve, Health, Wealth, and Success. And that's what we're talking about on Inside Indy today. Um, oh, gosh, we're all aging. I hate it, but it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we know we need to save for the future. Now, I know I, you know, I'm up there. And th let me say this, and I'll just be honest. I had a 401k years ago. Okay. The economy went south. Mm -hmm. So in order to save your life, your home, whatever was going on back in the mid 2008-7, I used it. Mm -hmm. So it was like starting all over again. So how do you recoup when you're maybe 10 years from retirement as opposed to 20 or 30 years from retirement? Well, or can you? You can. Um, it takes a little more discipline to recoup uh, after uh, when you start this late in the game. But um, there are products out there that will help you that can get you a good return that can help you recover from uh, a situation like that. Mm -hmm. And again, the earlier we start doing this, the better off we are in the long run because of compounding. And uh, it's never too late to start. Now, will you have exactly what you want if you start later in life when you retire? Probably not. But my goal is to help you live the same standard of living when you retire and be able to retire when you want to as what you're living today. Okay. And it might take a little more discipline with the situation where well, you know, I haven't started saving yet, Rodney, but, but I want to start. That's the first step. You know, you're aware that I've got to do something for my future because it's right around the corner and, and, and I got to be ready. Okay. Because we see a lot of people, Kelly, have to go back to work 
they're not able to retire or they did retire from something that they did for 20, 30 years and now they got to go back to work at like, uh, you know, Walmart or something like that mm -hmm. because they didn't have a plan in place. Mm -hmm. They didn't fail to plan. They just, or they didn't plan to fail. They just failed to plan. Right, right. So this a concept of a paycheck for life. So okay. this, this, how does that happen? And, and is that what you're saying in terms of for the rest of your life you're getting that you're living that on that same level that you did as you worked when you worked. You can. Um, there's products out there that will allow you to be in the market, get the gains when the market's up, but you can never lose a dime. Now, most people I tell that to say, "Oh, Rodney, that, that sounds too good to be true," yeah. and it probably does. Like in your four hundred one k, you were subject to market volatility. When the market's up, you get your statement looks so good. But when the market's down, it's like, okay, I'm losing money. With some of the products that I have, like a fixed indexed annuity, you can put your money in there. You can be in the market. When the market grows, you get the gains. When the market grows, you get the gains. But when the market's down, your money stays the same. It can never go backwards. Wow. You can also attach a rider to that, which is a guaranteed income for the rest of your life, compounding at about 6% annually every year. Wow. Okay. A very, very popular uh, product over six billion dollars in annuities was sold last year because people are realizing uh, how beneficial they are to their future and they got that security blanket over here that says I have a guaranteed income for the rest of my life that I cannot outlive and again the sooner you start and the more you can pump in there of course the, the better output you're going to have okay but still a great feeling to have I call it sleep insurance you go to bed at night and no matter what the market's done your neighbors are complaining because they've lost money. You haven't lost a dime. Okay. Now, so when you're deciding and you're still working, is it best to work with an individual like you? Or a lot of people are doing it through their jobs. Okay. So you say what about that? When you say through their jobs, you, you, you're talking... And they're talk, still working. You're talking like a 401k or a financial advisor through their job? A uh, 401k through okay. their job. Okay. A 401k, um, depending on whether there's a match from the company, what you're actually doing is you're creating a tax liability down the road. A good example, I, li I like to use analogies or examples. Mm -hmm. A good example, Kelly, uh, to describe a qualified plan, that's a qualified plan, a 401k, a 457, um, would be this. You come to me and say, hey, Rodney, you know, um, I need to borrow $10,000. And I say, okay, Kelly, I'll, I'll, I'll loan you $10,000. What's the first two questions you're going to ask me? Oh, well... Um, interest? Yeah. What, what's, <laughs> what interest are you going to charge me, yeah. Rodney? And, and when do I have to pay it back, right? Right. And I say to you, Kelly, you know, I'm doing pretty good right now, but down the road there's going to be a time when I'm going to need some money. And at that time, you and I will sit down and I'll determine how much interest to charge you and mm -hmm. how much you need to pay me back. That's basically what you're doing with a qualified plan. You're throwing money into the future and you have no idea what tax rates are going to be in place when you go to take that money out. Mm. So you're actually creating a tax liability when you do that. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Okay. So call you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There, there you go. Uh, Long-term care. Okay. Um, which, and, and I want to make sure I understand this. This is a situation where I'm working every day, then maybe I'm not so well and I need... How do I pay for my stuff if I'm sick for an extended period of time? Is that what long-term care is? Long-term care, yes, to answer your question, okay. basically. Long-term care is designed to help you protect everything you've worked your whole life for. Mm. Because the statistics show that over the age of 65... 77 percent of us are going to need some kind of care whether it be in our home whether it be an assisted living facility whether it be in a nursing home that's tough in itself but now you got to find a way to pay for it the statistics also show that 70 percent of people are impoverished after one year of entering a nursing home mm -hmm. because the average cost for a nursing home in the state of indiana is around hundred thousand dollars a year so imagine you're there for five years, what that's going to do to your savings and your investments right. and all that stuff. So what a long-term care contract does is in the event that you need care, you have care in your home, in a facility, and the insurance company pays for it, 
and you just keep your compounding on your investments or your guaranteed income rider or your annuity or your 401k or whatever you have, you keep it working for you mm -hmm. okay. instead of depleting everything you worked your whole life for to pay for your care. Okay. And so now when you have your assets and you have your savings and then you're in a nursing home and then... As you said, they pull that money. They're, you have to spend that money down before you qualify for, is that where Medicare? Medicaid. Medicaid comes in, okay. That's correct. I always get those confused, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll pretty much have you deplete all your assets down to about $55 a month is all you can keep for personal things, like if you want to go get your hair done. Mm -hmm. But the rest pretty much goes to uh, spending down, and then the government will step in with Medicaid and pay for your care. Wow. Okay. Where if you had a long-term care policy, Kelly, you protected everything that you had, maybe left it as a legacy for your family, and you've got the choices as to what facility you can go to. If you've ever visited a nursing home facility, there are nursing homes that you would never, ever want to be in, mm -hmm. and then there's nursing homes where you can have your own private chef. Wow. Yeah. Okay. They have activities going on. They bring in bands. They have activities together. They go to ball games. Well, the difference in those two, of course, is going to be cost. Are you on a state aid program? You're going to be in this facility over here. Have you got a long-term care policy who's paying your care for you and paying that facility? Then you've got more choices. Again, putting yourself in control. Okay. Now, does it protect you as far as, say, say you're still in your home, Okay. Uh, but you're not able to go to work? Okay. And um, what would it cover in that respect? Does it co Is there such a plan that would cover your your expenses, your bills at home in terms of your mortgage and things like that. How does that work? Um, there is a plan that would do that. It's not necessarily a long-term care policy. That would be more of a living life insurance contract. Now, when I mention life insurance, people get a little shaky because we grew up thinking life insurance, well, well, that only really benefits somebody if, it, if they die. It don't mm -hmm. benefit me. It's going to benefit my family or a spouse or maybe my children or something like that. Well, again... We've been taught wrong by the financial institutions. A good life insurance contract is one of the best financial vehicles that a person can own. It builds cash value, okay, mm -hmm. at a good interest rate. There's never a loss in the program. Of course, you do have the death benefit, but you have living benefits. If you were to get a chronic illness, if you were going to have a chronic condition, a critical illness, a critical accident, you can draw money out of there and receive an income like a disability policy while you're still living. Okay, wow. So it's like a good analogy is, uh, remember the first phone you ever saw? Mm -hmm. Was it like one of them trim line phones? Uh, yeah, probably further back than that. Well, I was going to say, I, I was going to say, I'm older than you. Kind. I had this kind right here. <laughs> and if you had a friend that had zeros in their number, like took forever uh, to oh, dial, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember okay. dial phones. Well, yeah. Well, look at your phone now. The phones, just like the phones have developed over the years, mm -hmm. these financial vehicles, like the life insurance and living contracts, they've developed as well, and they're they're excellent financial products. Oh. But when you mention life insurance to somebody, they like. Oh, I, I got, you know, I got life insurance. I don't need nothing okay. like that. Okay. So it sounds like there are a lot of different products out there, whether it's insurance or investments, and people need to do their research or give you a call and try to find out what the options are. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. certainly intrigued me, and I think it's, it's awesome what you're doing, and it's just so important for people to be prepared, and we think that day's never coming, and, of course, in our minds, we think we're going to live forever, and then we're going to stay young forever, and it does not go that way. But uh, I appreciate you coming in and enlightening us and uh, sharing your um, wealth of information about wealth with us here on Inside Indy. We've been talking to Rodney Jones, who uh, is a contributor to the book, Beat the Curve. Where can we get this, Rodney? Um, you can just call me, or, and I'll, uh, I'll sign one and send it to you. Okay, okay. So, no charge. All right, sounds very good. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. On Inside Indy. On Inside Indy. Thank you for joining us here on Inside Indy. I'm Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>